So, Retro Game Fair February 22 has been and gone. A couple of weeks ago now, though by the time you see this video it might be even longer. And it was, uh, it was a success, I would have said. Certain concessions were made because of the old pandemic that's still ongoing and still a problem. Including, you know, while well, everyone was wearing masks. Um, there was a maximum of 300 people, I think, in the venue. Venue's quite big, but... So 300 people is a fair amount. But it did mean that it took us longer than usual to get into the place. Normally when we, uh, when we go our little party, we, uh, you know, we're in there fairly, fairly quickly. Probably about, well, we're usually there before it opens, so it's whenever it opens and then we're straight in, normally. However, the queue this time was significantly bigger than it has been for the past few years. And so it took us rather a long time indeed, not helped by the fact that it was a maximum of 300 people. One in, one out, as it's always been, but there was a limit. And that made things difficult as you can imagine however you know they made the best of it and it turned out to be a pretty good event i didn't get any footage of it you'll notice that we're, we're already here we're already at the unboxing bit i have my uh, items here and the reason for that was because it always looks the same you know retro games fairs they've looked identical since i've first gone to them and this one was no different you know, obviously it looked slightly different because of the pandemic, but in reality, the only real difference was that everybody was wearing masks, so there's that. Also, the hotel that the fair is held has been done up slightly, so that looked ever so slightly different. Anyway, I'm rambling now. Basically, it's always looked the same, so no video this time. So let's get straight on to uh, what I ended up getting. And my haul this time was uh, quite a bit smaller than it has been, but... That's fine. The other major difference, I will just say, is that normally we go in, so we'll go in in the morning, have a look around, and then come out for lunch, and then go back in for round two and just don't sort of see if we've missed anything. Didn't do that this time because, like I said, the limit of people and the whole social distancing thing made it a little bit difficult, so we didn't bother this time. Okay, on to the haul. So I want to start with, uh, I think this is, I would say this is like the prize item, maybe? Which is, you know, it's not the rarest thing in the world. In fact, it was £16, and <laughs> if you know anything about retro game prices these days, that's cheap. Actually, a point on the prices, they were pretty good. I was expecting them to be a little bit higher than usual, but... They didn't seem to be. Everything was still just as affordable as it's always been, so that's probably a good thing. Anyway, uh, Donkey Kong 64. This is a Japanese copy, as you can see, and unfortunately does not, as far as I'm aware, include the expansion pack. Nevertheless, I do quite like this game. Um, I want to give it another play because it was a little bit difficult to get into to start with so I want to give it another go and really have a proper bash at it there is a reason for that um, it may have something to do with the next Hits 40 episode uh -huh. uh, I don't know what 1 to 4 means because it's not 1 to 4 players that's a bit strange also it works with the Rumble Pack I wasn't aware of this um, but the main point of interest for me, other than the game itself of course, is the fact that this Japanese version came with these nice cards look. So, I mean I've not opened it as you can see, and that's what I'm going to do in a second, because I don't believe this is an original seal. Now, the saying that though, it's got all these labels on it, so maybe it is. Maybe this is a sealed copy. Well, it won't be very long. Um, I'll try and keep these labels intact though. If not, then yeah, whatever. So I was very interested in these cards, and that's part of the reason why I got this specific copy. So let's just see what I can do. Get this open, and I'll try and, uh, like I say, keep keep everything intact. Let's take a look at these. There's something else included as well, unless this is just like the card that the cards go on. But. Uh, 
yeah, interesting one, Donkey Kong 64, because it introduced a lot of characters that we didn't really see <laughs> again. At least not very much of. Uh, you know what, I should have got the knife for this, shouldn't I? Well, we can uh, use an alternative implement, I suppose. Hmm. I do wonder now if this is an actual seal. That's interesting. Well, like I say, you know you know how we treat sealed games on this channel, and uh, N64 games are no exception. Oh, it's one of these security stickers. So this is clearly, like, I don't know, it's got tape all over it, so that suggests it has been opened and then maybe sealed back up. Bit of a strange one. Okay, uh, there's the game. Um, it is... Well, it's Donkey Kong 64. You know what uh, You know what to expect. There it is. And, uh, huh, there's not there's a great deal else in there, actually. No manual. Peculiar. And uh, here's our cards. Let's just take a quick look at these. So, when I have looked up other uh, copies of this online, they have usually contained the cards. Hmm. It's on this cardboard backing, and I've just tried to remove this Lanky Kong card, and it's actually coming coming away from the. Uh, it's tearing a little bit, so. I'm a little bit concerned, there is a bit of printing on the back as well, so... Kinda wanna get it out, but I don't wanna ruin this whole thing. It's part of the part of the package, isn't it? It is kind of taped on. Um, hmm. Possibly I could cut along here, maybe. Maybe I shouldn't worry about it. Maybe, maybe... And the application of heat is what's required. I don't know. I don't know. I'll work out a way of getting these cards off, but it does appear that the only two cards in here. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't entirely sure actually. I was kind kind of expecting there to be more cards, but there is just one for Lanky Kong there, and one for Tiny Kong, and that's a shiny one. And it does say on the back. I'm actually bending this up a treat. Uh, I can't see the real DK card game. And look, they had booster packs and things. Might have to seek some more of these out. That's uh, that's pretty cool, that. I like that a lot. So that can live in the box, but um, yeah, we'll uh, put that to one side for now. Like it a lot. DK64. And uh, I'm a big fan of trading cards in general, so, you know, that was a, that was a pretty good package for me. Right, next item. You may notice a theme um, emerging here. Yeah, it's uh, Donkey Kong Country 2. I have the original Donkey Kong Country on SNES, and I like it a lot. So I thought I'd get the second one. It was, I think it was £15 or maybe £16. A similar sort of price to the uh, old 64 game there. Um, and yeah, it's <laughs> Super Donkey Kong 2 with Diddy and Dixie. And, well, it's more of the same, really. But that's no bad thing, because it's flipping great. <laughs> um... Inside we have all the usual stuff, manual, that, and of course the game itself. And uh, that, this, the little reference card that they always include in Japanese uh, Super Famicom games. What is this? Oh, is this a registration card? Oh my! That's unusual to see. Ha! <laughs> it's a uh, carbon copy as well. Wow. No way. I did not expect to see a registration card in a console game. That's not something you often come across. At least not in my experience. It's usually with PC games that you, that you get registration cards. And they always ask stuff like, what computer or consoles do you have? What's your age bracket or whatever? And then you can win a printer. Makes no sense. Anyway, next item. Because it would be remiss of me to get, go to a retro games fair and not come home with some big boxes. You know, I, this this channel's gone in various different directions, but 
we always stay with the big box PC games. And this is no exception, this is the LucasArts Classic Collection Adventure. Uh, I can't remember how much this was, £20 I think. That's um, somewhere around there. I liked it because it's got all these, uh, well it's got all these classic Lucasfilm games. Well, depending on, yeah, depending on when each game is from, I think the only one on there is Loom that's from LucasArts. Rest to, rest to say Lucasfilm games on them. Uh, and yeah, <clears throat> it's not, it doesn't actually say LucasArts anywhere on it. Let's just have a... Yeah. I mean, it does there, but... Yeah, we've got The Secret of Monkey Island. We've got Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, a big graphic adventure, which actually looks better than I thought it did. I thought it was um, a bit more EGA -y than that, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, Loom, we've got Zack McCracken, and we've got Maniac Mansion. So lots of classic games here. This uh, doesn't include Day of the Tentacle or Summer Max, which is, I think that's more my uh, sort of era of games, but nevertheless, these are all excellent games in their own right. Uh, and just as a, an aside, it's from Sawthumb Retro Games. So, let's have a look. We've got... Well, actually, it doesn't say what's on each disc. It's just disc 1, disc 2, disc 3, disc 4, disc 5, disc 6. And then disc 7 is a double density disc rather than a high density one, so it's blue. Don't know why they did that, but... There you go, maybe they just didn't need all that space. C cutting on costs and all that. Now, something that I did notice is that... Uh, oh, 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 just cover that up because there's an address on there. Hmm. I'm not sure what the heck this actually is. There's, there appears to be some sort of uh, hints on here. I'm covering up the left-hand side because it might be a phone number. But yeah, somebody tried to write some hints on this. And there is indeed an address on the other side for somebody in Essex. How the heck did that get here? Normally, uh, normally receipts and things they they uh, tend to be local. Anyway, what I was uh, pointing out. I mean, you get the Secret of Monkey Island hint book. I don't know if that did that come with the box. It's hard to tell because it's got it's got its own barcode. But it doesn't look like you'd see it on like a shelf or something. It's not got a proper cover, so I'm guessing it did come with the box. Uh, and we've got what I can only assume are like instructions. There's the loom instructions. Oh, whoa. Security codes. There we go. That's what I was actually going to point out. Is that you don't get the dialer pirate thing. However, it doesn't appear that... Um, the DRM has been removed because we've got all these, which I'm guessing is like a security thing. Let's just have a quick look then, just bear with me, because it's kind of hard to read a manual uh, over the top of a camera. Yeah, it's got the controls for Loom, Secret of Monkey Island. Yeah, they, they seem to have removed the dialer pirate requirement on here. Oh, Maniac Mansion, uh -huh. we've got uh, We've got codes for that as well. Newcomer alarms. Good God, so they have left the copy protection in, but for the older games and not for the new one. Well, the newest one, as of this collection. Huh. Strange. Oh well, there's like a translation table in there for Indiana Jones as well. Okay. But no dial a pirate. That was that was the point I was making. So uh anyway, point is that's a nice little collection and uh you know I don't normally go for slash releases, not not like, I don't think there's many people who do go for slash releases, honestly. Uh, not for big box PC games, anyway. Console games are not bothered, whatever. Uh, but PC games, I do prefer to have the original release. But there was just something about this that, um, you know, it called to me. Oh, I forgot to put the discs back in, hold on. And the little flyer. I like to keep all the things like this. So I remember where I got it from. Yeah, I like it. And, uh, well, it's not the only sort of compendium style release that I've got either. 
but I believe it's the only one that I've got from a major publisher, so there's that. And the other item, the other big box game that I got was Baldur's Gate. Oh yeah. Um, it's a little bit damaged, look, we've got a, got a bit of a tear at the top here, but, you know, I'm confident that based on the newest video from RMC, which if you don't watch is an excellent retro channel, you probably, <laughs> he's a little bit more popular than me, I imagine if you've heard of him, then you've probably heard of me, well, no, hold on, if you've heard of me, then you've probably heard of him, yeah, that's, that's right, <laughs> um, Anyway, he did a, a video recently on restoring retro game boxes, and this isn't really in the best shape. We've got a little bit of a scuff here in the torn corner. It's a little bit, um, well, it's not actually the worst example of um, sort of bowing that I've seen. But, well, we can see that it is, it is evident. Yeah, so not in the best shape. However... How often do you see a flipping original Baldur's Gate big box, honestly? And I think, again, this was like 20 quid or maybe even less. It was stupidly cheap. And so I was like, yeah, of course I'm going for that. Absolutely. Um, and now I have both Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. So there you go. Um, inside, let's just have a quick look. It's a pretty chunky box, I'll tell you that much. We've got the quick reference card, we've got a manual, that's a beefy old manual, look at that. No messing around there, we've got a map. Oh yeah, this is an RPG, you can tell. Got a proper map, look at that, beautiful. And we've got, oh, there's a bit of mould inside, yeesh, that's not good. But we have the game on its many discs. I won't fold it all out because it's just make a mess. Uh, but you can, you can trust me on that. Oh, <laughs> see what I mean? problem with these interplay many many disc things is that the discs aren't actually held in very well which is a problem that Starfleet Academy has too and yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, any any game with that style of box you're gonna run into problems with it but Baldur's Gate yeah I was just I was so impressed to find that there were um this is the thing with retro games fair right they do very often have big boxes you know there's, there's several sellers that normally have big boxes they're either not very interesting or they are very interesting but they're in really bad shape it seems like outside of rare exceptions they don't really look after the big boxes either that or they've received big boxes from you know people selling the collections or whatever and they've not looked after them but then the seller's like well okay well we can sell it to some jerk who does a thing for retro PC games. I don't know. I don't think you should be selling stuff like that. I think it's a little bit disingenuous. The next item on my list is far too big to fit in the frame, but I'm sure you can get an idea. In fact, let's just tilt the camera back just a bit so you can see it in full. Come on. There we are. Yeah. Pop that back down. So this is the Mario Kart 8 premium Wii U pack and uh, I got this at a really great time didn't I because well if you've been following the gaming news of late uh, I'll take some pictures of this so you can actually see it properly if you've been following gaming news you'll know that the Wii U has uh, the ship has sailed completely now I mean the ship sailed many years ago the ship sailed basically as the system was released that poor thing just had no chance and, um, well, the issue is, the shop's closing down. <clears throat> so obviously nobody's been manufacturing or releasing new Wii U games for a long time now. Basically ever since the Switch was released. Um, everybody just sort of jumped ship on that and they stopped actually manufacturing new Wii U consoles around the time the Switch was released, if not before. Some, something, it was, it was near the time. At, at any rate, it might have been slightly after. And, it, you know, there's there's many problems, mainly because of the name and the reasons why this flopped. And it's unfortunate because after playing with it for a while, I've been playing with it since uh, since I got it back from Retro Games Fair, and it's a really nice little system. I like it a lot. <laughs> uh, partly because it's so hackable, but let's not worry about that. Um, I mainly got it so that I could stream with it, because I've been using a Wii, a modified Wii console, 
this very one, in fact. Um, and you'll notice that it's got a Wii to HDMI at the back, which is literally just goes into the uh, AV multi out and gives you HDMI output. Pretty super. Uh, part of, it's also upside down, but well, there you go. Only problem is, this gives me a nice composite output and it doesn't look the best, really. And to get anything better, I would have had to. Well, one option would be to install a Wii Dual in the Wii U, in the Wii, which is a RGB slash HDMI mod. Gives it a proper H um, RGB output because it can't actually do it out of the box. And of course, uh, native HDMI as well. So you get a nice crisp 1080p image out of it. The other option, and the far easier and uh, less, ex less expensive option, was to get myself a Wii U. So I got a Wii U and a Wii U is what I got. And it looks great. Uh, the Wii games, they scale up to I think 960p when I was reading online. So there is a bit of a black border around them and it doesn't actually double any of the, it doesn't properly scale up any of the graphics or anything. So it is a, it's a bit fuzzy still, just a bit fuzzy. However, to be honest, I'm fine with that because if I'm streaming Wii games or if I'm playing Wii games for the channel and recording stuff, I kind of want it to be an authentic image and looks pretty authentic to me. So it can play Wii games natively, which is great. But there's a great library of Wii U games as well. Um, and since many of them have been put onto the Switch, they're now dirt cheap to get hold of, including but not limited to Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Uh, these are ones I got from the Retro Games Fair as well, by the way. Um, Super Mario 3D World, which unfortunately contains a copy of Mario Party 10. Have emailed the seller about that, but I don't think they're reading their emails because they haven't actually got back to me yet. They did get back to me in the first instance, but after saying they'd send me one and I've sent them my address and they haven't actually sent me one out yet. Hopefully I can update you on that story and actually play some Super Mario 3D World, but until then, no. Hyrule Warriors! This looked interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's six quid, I'm not really gonna say no when it's a Zelda game, it just it looks fun. Um, and Yoshi's Woolly World, which I've wanted to play for flipping ages just because of how adorable it looks. Look at the knitted Yoshis. I remember actually when this first came out they had the Yarn Yoshi Amiibos didn't they? And I really wanted one of them but I had no use for it and I couldn't really justify the cost of an Amiibo when all I wanted was a Yarn Yoshi. I didn't really want the Amiibo part of it. Maybe I can get hold of one now and actually make use of it. Who knows? Or maybe I can't because it's an Amiibo. Hashtag Nintendo tax. So that's them. And that just about concludes what I got from the Retro Games Fair. Except for... This. It was uh, four mystery games for £5. This is from South from Retro Games again. And I thought, you know what? Uh, I, was, I was buying something from them anyway. I was getting that Lucasfilm thing. And I thought, yeah, let's give this a go. That'll be kind of amusing. Uh, all PlayStation 2 games, which I failed to spot until just now, uh, and not including any FIFA or Tiger Woods titles. I'm guessing they do these in the shop as well, because they do have a bricks and mortar shop in York. Don't know if you saw the address from earlier, but it is a thing. And, well, the selection is a little bit disappointing, really. What have we got? We have... 50 cent bulletproof, a game I have zero interest in playing. Uh, and yeah, there's 50 cent shooting people. I never understood why that would be a selling point. Like, surely you don't want. I know he's. I don't know. I, don't, I know he's a rapper and he does hip hop and, you know, it's, it can be very violent hip hop and all this. But do you really want. As a musician. Do you really want to be advertising yourself killing people? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. 
And Colin to the back of the box is uh, taking on crime syndicates and so he's really the good guy, but I don't know, it just comes across as a bit strange to me. Uh, but that's 50 Cent, uh, maybe that's just his shtick, I don't know. It looks, it looks proper angry on that cover though, doesn't he? Next, Spider-Man. Uh, it's the first Spider-Man game for PS2. Uh, you don't actually hear that much about this one because, well, my understanding is it got superseded massively by Spider-Man 2. And there's the discs actually loose. And the case is knackered. In fact, yeah, that's why the discs loose because one of the teeth's missing. Good God, that's why they were giving it away for a quid. Because you'll notice I actually have five games here and not four. Star Wars Starfighter, um, I have a copy of this and it's in much better nick than that. Enter the Matrix, I have a copy of this and it's in much better nick than this one. Uh, this is a really good game actually. Um, third person shooter, it's got its own Matrix parallel plot. Doesn't follow the films, but it does its own thing. And I think it's something, I think it's between, takes place between one and two Matrix films. Uh, so that's pretty good and worth playing, but uh, I got already have a copy of it. And, uh Just cover that face up, I'm not having that filth on my channel. It's Pop Idol, the official video game. Cheapest creepers, oh there he is again. And there's a cartoon of him even. Eesh. What a disgusting man. Um, yeah, this game looks hideous. And bad and wrong. And terrible. And... Awful in every possible way. So let's just, uh, yeah, put that to one side and uh, I don't know. I don't know what to do with them. Maybe I'll take them to the charity shop or maybe I'll do a giveaway or something. I don't know. But uh, that's beside the point. The point is I'm about to run out of SD card space, so I'm going to cut that short there. But before I do, hopefully I've got enough time to talk about this, you'll notice that I'm not on the floor or on a little table this time. I'm on my new desk. So if I did say that I would do a disc building stream because this was financed uh, by the support of my wonderful Twitch viewers, the fantastic community, so thank you all very much for that. And I promised that I would do a desk building stream. Didn't end up doing the stream because it wasn't really viable, but I did record it all. So I'm going to edit that together and uh, you can go and watch it on my other channel, and I'll put a link in the description. Right, I'm really out of battery now, so not battery, SD card space, whatever. I'm going now. Bye.